Hi guys, uh, this is a video response to uh, SuperDan88's thing about how retro gamers get like, you know, given bad stuff. It's not fair, sort of thing. I don't know, I can't really think of the words. But um, yeah, uh, I am back. Uh, my new room I'm in at the moment. This is just something I had to do now because I feel so passionate about what he was talking about because of one certain shop I know, so I'm going to talk a lot about it. I've just done this once and it went on for 20 minutes and I was quite happy to do that, two parts fine, whatever, I haven't done a video for a while. But the fucking microphone didn't work, so I'm going to do it again. It sucks. But I'm going to do it straight away. The thing is, I almost went beyond 20 minutes with that video because I feel so passionate about it, so I'm going to see if I can relight that passion and just say all the same stuff again. And maybe it will make it a little bit shorter. But it, this, this will probably go on for two parts. So yeah, anyway. What he was talking about is the fact that retro gamers recollect old games. And obviously there aren't any real places you can go to buy these games like, properly. Like, in terms of like, you know, eBay basically is the only like place you can get it. Like, GameStation dropped their retro stuff. There aren't many places that still do retro stuff. I mean, there are some, but there aren't a lot. And, um... So anyway, there's a shop where I live. I live on the other white bottom of England, off the south coast of Little Island. Uh, and amazingly, there is this absolutely incredible retro gaming shop. Um, it's called Outland. It's in Ride, and it is crammed full of retro and uh, import stuff, as well as the new stuff as well. And I mean seriously crammed full. It's about the same size as the room I'm in now. I'll give you a quick glimpse of the room I'm in. There we go. It's about that size, if not a little bigger. And um, it's literally crammed full, you know, from floor to ceiling, full of retro goodness and all that sort of stuff. It's amazing. It's one of the best retro shops I've ever seen in terms of what they have. They have everything. Everything you could want is in this shop. All the import stuff is in this shop. It's amazing. It's also a museum. In fact, it's not a museum. But it might as well be because you can't buy anything now. Because the prices are ridiculous. It's so highly priced. It's so depressing. It depresses me every single time I go in there. I get so angry when I go in there. and Well, when I come out. Because this guy who owns it, as far as I'm concerned, is a complete and utter idiot. He just is. He's not a businessman. He's a dick. He's like some guy that is like, Ooh, I want to own a retro game shop and I'll have all the best games from around and I'll charge ridiculous prices so these peasants can only look and tap at the window, you know, and only dream of what's inside or what they could actually own because you can't buy this stuff. It's ridiculously priced. Like, just for example, right, there are PS2 games in there which he classes as new. Right. This is because obviously when the PS2 was the only console, well, well when we were in the last generation, he'd obviously bought these games, stopped them as new, you know, and yeah, they're still classed as new. When did this guy do a last price check? Or like just go around and restock and price, reprice everything? Because he hasn't. You go in there, right? Now, there's a game I've been wanting to get called Klonoa 2. I haven't bought it yet. I love the Klonoa games. They're fantastic. I haven't bought the PS2 version yet. I don't know why. I just haven't got around to it. It goes for about £10 on eBay, right? This guy's got one in there. He's got one left, or I don't know how many he ever stocked, but he's got one in there. It has new on it, right? It's not sealed, by the way, but he classes it as new, and he charges 30 quid for it. It's like, dude, it come out like... God knows how, that game was quite within the first couple of years of the PS2's release. You know, <laughs> it's insane. 30 quid, what is he on? Seriously, yeah, it was new then. It's not new anymore, mate. It doesn't matter if it's in perfect condition. Charge a little bit extra from what it might go on eBay. If it's, you know, whatever. But that's just a ridiculous price. 30 quid, you can't... No one is going to buy a PS2 game for 30 pound if it's new if it's not worth that money, like, like I know we, we, Super Dan talked about inflated prices on eBay, and he's right, there's shitloads of them. But there are a few games out there on the PS2 which demand 30 quid, and to be honest, it's okay and it's worth it. Eco and Shadow of the Colossus, for example, are two games that both, you know, from Team Eco, they're both quite rare. They're f I'm talking about the first ones, not the reprints, but the actual first games were like in limited numbers, and they're worth 30 quid. They're great games, and they're worth the price. 
So they're so okay that they go for thirty pounds on eBay. But it's just it's just insane. I'm gonna I'm almost right, I'm gonna move on from PS2 to Xbox and I'm talking Xbox originals now. He does the same thing. Now this is a console that ki was killed off by Microsoft themselves in 2005. This is four years later now. He's still got games in there with new on them, even though they're not sealed. 30 quid. It's like, dude, no one is going to buy an Xbox game for 30 quid. Now. This is no chance. No one. It doesn't matter how rare it is. I don't think there's one game on the Xbox that goes for 30 quid. Hello? Damn it. Uh, that was my mum at the door. <laughs> yeah, uh, she was just telling me she was going to bed. So I'm going to talk a little bit more quietly now. So anyway, yeah, uh, I don't remember where I was. I think I was with Xbox games, like Xbox Originals. So anyway, yeah, Xbox Original games. I'm going to have a prime example now. Halo, right? How many games, how many Halo games, original Halo, do you think are out there? I mean, you're talking in, in probably in the millions, right? This game is huge. He has in there new, despite it not being sealed, 30 quid. 30 quid for Halo. I mean, seriously, what planet is this guy living on? It's just insane. And, like, it just continues on and on and on throughout the whole store. I mean, he does have, like, 360, PS3 and Wii games in there. You know, it's not all retro. And they're actually quite competitive prices because where he's based, there isn't actually a game station game or you know blockbuster games. Well, there actually there is one, but it's mainly just just blockbuster. They have a corner for the games, and like there isn't. I think there's a double eight smash, but they didn't do any games. There used to be a Warwars, but that's fucked now. So <laughs> yeah, like so he, he doesn't have any competition. So my like, main competition, not like, proper good competition. So his prices are actually quite competitive, like thirty pound for a brand new Xbox 360 game. Some of them are a little bit more than that when he knows they'll sell more, but yeah. And this is basically what he makes his money from now, obviously, because it's like, there's no way anyone else is buying some of the games that are in there. It's just r absolutely atrocious. And as I was saying, like, there's floor to ceiling of retro stuff, like, just everywhere. Like, ha he has those certain sections that are with the brand new games, and then there are a couple of shells, and they're quite competitive prices, as I said. But he has, like, retro stuff mainly. And uh, he has like shelving units or whatever, loads of shelving units, so they don't quite go all the way to the ceiling. So he has like loads of awesome consoles and accessories and add-ons and peripherals, all like in these boxes. And um, I'm going to give you an example of how crazy this guy is, right? My friend Taz Forever went in there, he saw like a GameCube chainsaw controller for Resident Evil 4. He's quite a Resident Evil fan, he saw that, he knew about it before, but he's like, ooh, I wouldn't mind buying that, that's quite cool. You know, and immediately we both knew this is either going to go really well or really bad, and you can probably guess where it went. So, yeah, I'm still moving around. It's a bit weird. Uh, he goes, he goes, he goes up to have a look at it. It's all in pretty good condition. This is like the limited edition controller. It's only a controller. Now we were both thinking, how much would we actually want to pay for this? And we both thought twenty quid. But we also know we're in shop. Hmm. We prob he'd probably go to 30, maybe 35 at a push, like a serious push. So we were actually quite quietly confident because we were we were thinking this thing was almost hidden on the top of a shelf. We're guessing that this guy probably has had barely any inqu inquiries about this controller, you know, at all. Possibly a couple since it's been there in my opinion because it's not exactly any, everything that some people will look at it and go ooh but they think do I really want a chainsaw controller not really so anyway yeah it's up there and so he goes up says how much is the GameCube chainsaw controller and the guy says 70 quid what the heck 70 pounds for a bloody controller for a system that no one you know even you know, apart from retro gamers, no one plays the system anymore. I mean, you can pick up a GameCube for about five quid. You know, in fact, I did in a shop over the road, which I'll talk about later. But yeah, so you can pick up a GameCube for about five pounds nowadays on eBay. It's not a desirable console anymore. And this controller is indeed...
quite peculiar and possibly this guy is obviously this guy get gets off by be thinking or pretending these things are rare for the people who actually don't know about it but what he needs to know and what I don't think he understands is that retro gamers aren't know what these things prices go for I don't think I've ever bought a, a game and gone oh I paid way too much for that like I know how much I know pretty much I don't know, I've got this like running thing in my head, I've searched eBay so many times, I know what games are worth, especially the ones I'm actually interested in and actually inquire about. So, it's just stupid. Oh, weird dog barking outside. This is, this is, I did, actually, I did say I did this video already, but the microphone didn't work, so yeah. Anyway, I'm going to continue on, this isn't, yeah. Anyway, yeah, so, yeah, 70 quid. And then also, the guy said, oh yeah, but by the way, you can get the PS2 one for only 30. I'm like... How does he get off on that? 30 quid for the PS2 one? Why is the PS2 one so much cheaper? I mean, as far as I'm aware, although I could be terribly wrong about this, the PS2 one is probably even...